present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Stephen Fry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Just a Minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm new to this. Um, hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week in London's glitzy West End at Her Majesty's Theatre. This fine venue is situated on London's famous thoroughfare known as Haymarket. Now a busy one-way street, it acquired that name because the traffic travels only one way. <laughs> Close by here, of course, is Soho, home to London's French Quarter, which was visited by President Sarkozy during his recent stay in London. The French president was greeted at Waterloo Station and, driven via Trafalgar Square, <laughs> began to suspect someone was trying to make a point as he sat down to lunch at the Surrender Monkey Bistro. <laughs> Also in Soho is London's Chinatown, where visitors flock to the annual international festival of Feng Shui. We can't say where this year's venue is because they keep rearranging it. <laughs> London's West End is, of course, best known as Theatre Land, hosting many a hit show. Amongst the most successful was a recent revival of Cabaret, the musical set in 1930s Berlin, with its hyperinflation, worthless currency, mass unemployment, and economic collapse. It's amazing the West End could afford to put on the show at all, really. <laughs> One of the stars making Cabaret such a hit was Julian Clary. Now, Julian, you may remember, began his career as the Joan Collins fan club with Fanny the Wonder Dog. However, when her teeth fell out, meaning she couldn't chew her bones properly and she took to sniffing strange men's trousers, Julian and Fanny sent her a get well card. <laughs> this... This very theatre has played no small part in the West End's success with The Phantom of the Opera, which in a run of 23 years has unbelievably grossed more than £1.8 billion. And talking of unbelievably gross, let's meet the teams! On my left, Barry Crown and Graham Garden. And on my right, Timbrook Taylor and Victoria Wood. Now, our regular scorer... Samantha can't be here this week, but making a very welcome return, I'm very glad to say, I have on my left hand that Swedish sensation, the rippling Sven. Okay, now we kick off today with the round called Uxbridge English Dictionary. The English language has a plethora of terms which appear to be interchangeable, but that isn't always the hold-all. <laughs> there are many people who have no clear understanding, for example, of the important difference in definition between salt water and brine. Well, salt water means water containing a strong solution of salt, usually sodium chloride, or though in chemistry labs it can be potassium chloride, whereas brine is how the Queen addresses the Prime Minister. <laughs> However, <laughs> meanings are constantly changing. So, teams, let's hear any new definitions you may have spotted recently. And, uh, Tim, you can start. Aficionados, charity for orphan fish. <laughs> Victoria? Dictaphone. <laughs> Idiot who's always on his mobile. <laughs> Barry. <clears throat> Languid, laid back Welsh village. <laughs> Graham. Nicotine to arrest a youth. <laughs> Farcical, bike that makes you look stupid. <laughs> Lackadaisical, a bicycle made for one. <laughs> oh. Scrutineer, what MFI tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
serpentine fluid for getting paint off snakes. <laughs> Puny, the religious equivalent of tennis elbow. Chinchilla, triple decker ice cream cornet. <laughs> Chatelaine. Couldn't get home in time. <laughs> well, we'll get, um, we'll get all those words in the next edition of the Ashbridge English Dictionary. Thank you, teams. Now, you're going to sing along with a selection of well-known discs in the round called Pick Up Song. <laughs> Now, uh, our record researcher, Sven, this week visited the gramophone library earlier uh, when he took the opportunity to ask the helpful old archivists if they'd um, <laughs> care to donate something to the good cause of which he's a patron. Sven says they couldn't have been kinder, as a matter of fact, immediately pulling out some old rare seven inches to put into his charitable body. <laughs> and Sven is... Uh, Sven is back now and poised over the turntable, ready to give those discs a spin. <laughs> now, you should sing along, teams, and continue when Sven turns the volume down. If, when the music returns, you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'd be awarding points. Um, what do points mean? Prizes! Oh. <laughs> you learn every day. This week's prize will ideally suit the sweet-toothed S&M enthusiast who's always in a hurry. It's this bird's instant whip. <laughs> so... <laughs> Graham, I'd like you to start, please. And I'd like you to accompany Mungo Jerry singing in the... ch 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 in the summertime, when the weather is high, you can stretch right up and touch the sky. When the weather's fine, you got women, you got women on your mind. Have a drink, have a drive, go out and see what you can find. If her daddy's rich, take her out for a meal. If her daddy's poor, just do what you feel. Speed along the lane, do a ton or a ton and twenty-five. When the sun goes down, you can make it, make it good, and they lay by. Well done. Now, your next, Barry, this should be interesting. I'd like you to accompany your younger self singing on a hit you had that I believe was a, in the top ten in Finland. Number one in Finland. Number one in yes. Finland. They, singing they gave your away, They internet. gave away a car with each record. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Singing then your international number one hit, The Purple People Eater. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think Sven must have been playing that at 33 instead of 45. We'll try again. Sven, come on. <laughs> sorry, Sven's only young. He didn't know they existed. It's a 78, Sven. <laughs> Okay. I love it. <laughs> oh, when I saw a little thing coming out of the sky, it had one long horn, one big eye. I commenced to shake it and I said, Who we? It looks like a purple people leader to me. It was a one eyed, one horn flying purple people leader, one eyed, one horn flying purple people leader, one eyed, one horn flying purple people leader. She looked strange to me. Well, he came down to earth and he lit in a tree. I said, Mr. Purple People Eater, don't eat me. I heard him say in a voice so gruff, I wouldn't eat you because you're too tough. It's a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. One-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. One-eyed, one side to see. Said, Mr. Purple People Eater, watch your line. He said,
Were you quicker now or were you slower? Maybe the original you, you started playing was the original. I should have matched that. Whatever happens, I'm never going to Finland. So, um, finally now, Tim and Victoria, a duet for you, if you would. It's Nicole Croisi and Francis Lay. You may remember them singing Un homme et une femme. Fantastic. <laughs> C'est une longue histoire. Un homme, une femme. Oh, oh, La femme du hasard. Two, three. Comme It's wonderful. Very sexy. Sven wants you to know, Victoria, that you could turn him. Um, <laughs> now, the teams are going to give full vent to their acting skills in the round called Sound Charades. <laughs> this is played in homage to the erstwhile TV favourite, Give Us a Clue. And that's homage as in the expression, Ronnie Biggs, the great train homage. <laughs> the, uh, the original uh, was a TV version, you may remember, of charades with mimes conducted in total silence to an appreciative audience. The team's version is exactly the same, except for the bit about the silence and the appreciative audience. <laughs> the grand master of the game, of course, was Lionel Blair, who still holds, yeah, he still holds, you know this, the world record for the, a successful mime at just under three seconds. When given the hunt for Red October, he indicated second word sounds like and pointed to Timmy Mallet. <laughs> well, Tim and Victoria, could, uh, Tim and Victoria, could you start, please? Your, your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the touchscreen laser display. <laughs> and uh, here's the mystery voice for listeners at home. The young Victoria. The young Victoria. OK, Victoria and Tim, off you yep. go. There's uh, three words, and it's just a film, isn't it, I think? It's anyway, it film. goes like this. David. Yes, dear? <laughs> My bum look big in this nappy. The end. The end. <laughs> it's a posh and Beck's context. Mm. Yeah. It? Yes. To Helen Beck's. <laughs> <laughs> David. No. No, not David, but. Footballers' wives. No, not David. <laughs> one's called David. The other one's not called David. <laughs> He's uh, called David. She isn't. Not I can't help you much for... Oh, yes. Goliath. I'm Goliath. <laughs> Do the words not David or not Tim occur? Chip. Is the first word the? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Is the second word young? No. Mm. Yes. yes, it is. I was kidding. <laughs> and is the third word not David? <laughs> yeah. Young it. Victoria. Yeah. Young Victoria. Yeah. All right. Well, you had to tease it out of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Story of my life. Don't you just... <laughs> so, now, Barry and Graham, your title is now being exhibited on the haptic touchscreen. And here once more is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Casualty. Casualty. Ooh. I saw a bit we of that. Does that matter? It's one word. Television, one word. Dougal! Here he is! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here is, you'll, uh, you'll have had your tea. Well, uh, no, actually. No, no well, no. well uh, look here, just for once. Why don't you join me? I'm having a few friends over. Oh, for tea? Of course, for oh. tea. Yeah. I'll, uh, 
Oh. For tea? Aye. Oh, yes. I'll away home and change into my dress kilt and my Sunday sporran. No, oh, no, no, no. Yes. You, you just come as you are, man. Not even a top hat? No, no, no top hat. It's a very informal do. Oh, I'll be there. Good. That's it. Is it countdown? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we pick up from that? The people are coming. People are coming uh, over, over, I think. Yes. And that it's perhaps a casual affair. So it could be cas. Don't know. Cas no, Stop no. playing with us. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, know, you know you love it. that. Yeah. No, is it Casanova which is suggested? No. 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 <laughs> oh, stop it. Very close. You've no. got it. What? No, Friends. I haven't. I saw the first three letters, that's oh. all. What were they? C A S. Oh, there's a confession. You said one of the words that is the first three yes, syllables. Yes, exactly. Oh, you're playing I, with I don't us, know what you're talking about. <laughs> the coming over. Coming is, over. Coming over. For over. A, is it over formal? For a for it's informal. casual. Casual. Casual tea. Casual. Yeah! <laughs> That's what comes of cheating. I cheats <laughs> never prosper. Cheats never prosper. Now it's time for the teams to take a look at the lives of famous people as portrayed in press interviews and lifestyle magazines. Now our very own Barry Cry will be at something of an advantage here as he's constantly being interviewed by magazines and newspapers. Barry's life is a non-stop whirl of meetings and appointments that would daunt a man half his age. If they ever find out what it is that keeps him going, someone should bottle it. <laughs> Okay, teams. <laughs> now, I'm going to read to you from a selection of genuine magazine and newspaper cuttings concerning a well-known personality. However, certain key words or phrases have been removed, and your task, teams, is to guess what the original wording might have been. Today's subject is heiress and bon viveuse Paris Hilton. And here's a first quotation. These are all real quotations. There's a lot of heiresses out there, and I don't see any of them doing what I've done. It's Paris Hilton PLC, baby. I have so many projects. I go around the world every three days, designing and personally approving it all. <laughs> I have one partner. We both own it. He does the business side, and I... Don't. <laughs> His first name is Fred. I can't... Spell Fred. <laughs> That's an extraordinary good guess. He actually says, I can't spell his last name. <laughs> I watched Disney animated films when I was a child. My favourites are Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella. I think I'm more like Snow White. She was always... Feeling happy. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to go out and have fun with my friends. I'm an Aquarius. We're... Supposed to be the rarest blood group. <laughs> Social people. Mm. I don't have sex unless I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the opposite of me, then. In a relationship. <laughs> <what you> <laughs> um, <laughs> the best thing I've ever bought with money is my house. I call it my house. <laughs> my Paris palace. In my last movie, I worked with this incredible acting coach. We literally were working for like six hours a day for three weeks before we started... Janet and John, book one. <laughs> Shooting. The script was really hot. I had the coolest death scene. The producer had T-shirts made for the movie saying... Do not resuscitate. <laughs> See Paris die, whatever, is what she said. We were going to release my first <laughs> single in Europe first and test out the song, but within 30 seconds it was playing on the radio stations. It's infectious and people are saying... They'd rather have measles. <laughs> <laughs> I like cry when I listen to it. It's so... So. <laughs> London is my favourite city in the world. I love everything about London. I love the people, the accents, the food, the... Gondolas. <laughs> I 
I haven't seen much British TV because I'm always out partying, but I've seen a bit of EastEnders. It looks like... Chekhov to me. <laughs> <laughs> looks like it's set in 1988, she said rather rudely. If I couldn't act, sing, model or design, I'd... Find something else I couldn't do. <laughs> Work in the pet store is her offering. <laughs> and finally, I'd love to have children in the next two years. I'd like three or four. I'll name my first girl... Girl one. <laughs> London, in fact. Oh, London. Oh, well, yeah. brilliant. Your answer's much better than hers. OK, the, the teams, ladies and gentlemen, are going to sing for us again now. Oh. In, a round, in a round called Just a Minim. It's a musical tribute to the wireless favourite Just a Minute, hosted by the irrepressible Nicholas Parsons. You know, when the BBC first sought a chairman for that show, they insisted it be in capable hands, and incapable they got. Um, in, in Just a Minute, the teams will attempt to sing a well-known song without hesitation, deviation, replacement bus service, or repetition. Accompaniment will be provided at the piano by Colin Sell. Now, we have exciting news about Colin's career. I can't say too much, but if I mention the words Van and Morrison, you'll immediately guess Colin's got a supermarket delivery job. <laughs> now, the song I'd like you to sing without repetition, hesitation, or deviation is Hound Dog. Barry, you can start. But a hound dog crying all the time. You are as naught, a mere cur. You ain't. Uh, who buzzed that? was that? me. Oh, well done. Because he just stopped. You... <laughs> he did stop, didn't he? All right, Victoria, it's yours. And there's, from uh... from where he went. Where... You, yeah. you ain't never caught a rabbit. You ain't never caught a rabbit. You ain't never caught a rabbit. Okay. <laughs> You ain't never caught a rabbit. Never caught a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joyce Grenfell. Um, oh, lovely rabbit. Um, sorry. <laughs> well, they could make you go, couldn't they? Right? Um, <laughs> you ain't never caught a rabbit, and you ain't no friend of mine. When they said you was high class, well, that was just a lie. They told me you were not common, and that wasn't strictly true. Oh, you Barry, haven't grabbed any bunnies. Oh, there was said was repeated. Oh. Said there was a repetition. Yeah. It said yes. harsh, but, but within the rules. Yeah, yeah. Barry, I'm sorry. Oh, not a popular challenge. That was a Clement Freud memorial interruption. <laughs> Off you go then, Barry, it's yours. Oh, where are, where were we? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm allowed to ask where we were, aren't I? No. no. On the grounds of hesitation. We'll ask someone with musical knowledge. Colin, who can tell us where we were? <laughs> we were up to... You ain't never caught a rabbit, was oh, where we were up to. to. You ain't no friend of you mine, but you mustn't say you ain't no friend of mine, because that will be repetition. You've never apprehended a lupine. Yeah, very good. Uh, <laughs> off my Christmas card list. Isn't that, I thought a lupine's a wolf, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. You think, were confused. You're thinking of Lapin. Lapin. No. But I did want to repeat. <laughs> Lapin. Oh. I did want to repeat rabbit, obviously, so oh, I no. thought wolf would do. But yeah. Lapin, if you prefer. Well, have you ever seen a dog that could catch a wolf? What sort of dog would that be? A dog with no sense. That'd be a wolf hound, wouldn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think there was also deviation from the tune at one stage. <laughs> Victoria, that was your challenge, I think, wasn't it? So you, you, you pick it up. Oh, <laughs> God, was it? Yeah. You challenged the lupine. Um, yeah. all right. Right, go on. You are really a big, fat, four-legged, jumping-up animal, and you're whinging constantly. You are always sniffing at the dog's bottoms and moaning a lot, 24-7. Tim challenge. That was definitely deviation of the worst possible thing. It wasn't! That's <laughs> sniffing, what dogs a, do. sniffing a dog's bottom. That's what dogs do. It's another way of saying you're a dog. Yes, but humans do things, but we don't mention them. No, I didn't mention them. <laughs> well, we do on this programme, Tim. It was a oh, dog. Right. It was a dog, and I'm that's what dogs that, do. Thank you very much. Okay. Five seconds. Yeah. Beatrix Potty would be really keen on you, <laughs> but I'm not. Not. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, Sven blew then, so I wasn't sure what was going on, because I was... Victor- <laughs> Victor- I think Victoria won. Thank you. Good. <laughs> It's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a round of Builder's Radio Times. In fact, uh, Sven has to nip off to make sandwiches now for some builders that he has working at his house. No matter how many times they ask for cheese and gourmet chutney, he always palms them off with relish. Um, So, while he's away enjoying that, um, I'll ask the teams to suggest TV and radio programmes listed in an edition of the Radio Times, compiled especially for members of the building trade. You can start this one, Victoria. The Hod Couple. (laughs) Tim. Start the week (laughs) midweek. DIY and Pasco. (laughs) The Bill. That's very popular. (laughs) I can't believe that's my gutter. It ain't dry rot, Mum. (laughs) Oh, bother, where art thou? (laughs) Plaster mind. (laughs) I know what you didn't do last summer. (laughs) Bum, cracker jack. (laughs) Pencil. The number one shady defective agency. (laughs) Casual tea with four sugars. (laughs) And the late night movie, Bring Me the Heart of Alfredo. (laughs) Well, ladies and gentlemen, well. Well, as the bull of time wrecks the china shop of destiny and the china shop owner decides he should probably have got a cat... It's the end of the show. So, from the teams, from Sven, myself, and the good people here at Her Majesty's Theatre, it's goodbye, goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, and Victoria Wood were being given silly things to do by Stephen Fry, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. Thank you.